Hello, everyone. My name is Latoya. I am the personal curator for Dope Curves. This is our first ever podcast interview with personal stylist that I love. I've worked with her in the past, and you're going to get some awesome um, information from her about how to style your curves. And her name is Joya. Welcome, Joya. Thank you so much, Latoya. I really am honored <laughs> to <laughs> you. And it's been a journey. So just for you to even ask me to do an interview, I'm like, oh, me? <laughs> you <laughs> I love working with you I've worked with you a few times so I love yeah. working with you so I, I, I you were the first one on the top of my mind and when I saw your your communication like I'm back I was like Yo! yes yes <laughs> <laughs> I was like I'm not. all right I'm glad, I'm glad that you're, you're back and we could start collabing again and doing yes. other things so yes absolutely I'm excited <laughs> so tell us a little bit about yourself how long have you been a personal stylist Okay, so I got into personal styling. I'm going to kind of go all the way back, if you don't mind. I don't um, mind. Okay, it started out as a hobby. Um, what is it? We're in 2023. I want to say about six or seven years ago, I um, had the idea of wanting to start a blog. And that stemmed from me actually wearing my hair in its natural state. Um, I cut it all off and I've always had long hair. And so I had to be very creative <laughs> mm -hmm. with how, you know, I'm, I had this short hairstyle that I've never worn before. What I, I don't know what I'm doing, um, but just getting creative with my hairstyle, it stemmed into getting more creative in my own wardrobe and how I, present myself in my attire. So it started out as a hobby. I was using my Instagram platform to try to post as consistently as I could with like what I was wearing to work. At the time I was working in an office and it's like, you know, this is what I wore today. Even if it's just a picture of like my accessories, um, it's not, it didn't have to be the whole outfit, but I just wanted to kind of present myself that way just to see, you know, how people would, you know, see it and perceive it. And it eventually stemmed into me getting a website. I had no idea what I was doing, girl. I <laughs> was on Wix, like, what do I do here? What do I do there? And I bought a Canon. I didn't know what I was doing with that either. <laughs> but just the process of letting that kind of evolve into something bigger than what I had initially planned was very fun. Um, so then um, with the blog, I also liked the written portion of kind of going through and telling the story based off of what I was choosing to um, style, my, style myself in for the blog, just really telling the story and giving tips about what you could do to make it yours. Um, and so I ended up getting on a different platform or featured as a, as a guest blog, blogger on a different platform that was my aunt and uncle was a part of. And I was starting to get a lot of questions about styling or about how, how can, how, well, how can I style this? How can I style that? And I was getting so many questions. I was like, oh, hmm? yeah, this is a need. <laughs> this is a need. <laughs> so before I even got into actually st the styling, um, I met uh, a young lady by the name of Lace. Um, I met her on a... Uh, I was, I'm a dancer <laughs> and mm -hmm. I was dancing um, through this, uh, this theater on a stage play and she was part of like the production. And I, I can't remember exactly how it happened, but she asked me to help her on an up and coming pretty much for her, um, her consignment store was going to be online. And she asked me to be a part of it. And that's where I really got my experience with styling other people. So we had models to come on and 
um, photo shoots to, you know, do for the website. And it was very nerve wracking because I never had any practice styling anybody else. It was just always me. So, and, but it was also very rewarding when I would style them and they would be like, well, I would, I would have never thought about that. And so <laughs> I'm like, oh. Um, and so from there I went ahead and started my own styling business to be a personal stylist and a wardrobe stylist so styling people who you know your everyday woman man however you identify um (laughs) and also being on set and working with models and just being able to really be like no this is the look that I want to create for you so having like the balance of the two so that was a long story long but (laughs) no no that's good I think it's helpful because one I, I I I didn't even know that you were a dancer I don't know why I didn't know that but maybe we talked about it and I don't remember (laughs) we probably haven't I I don't know why um yeah yes (laughs) And two, that just speaks to your style in general, as far as people Mm -hmm. like, oh my gosh, she does this. I need to make sure that she's on it. Because I think that's how I found you too, uh, was through that boutique. I I don't really know how we linked up, but I think it might have been seeing the boutique floating around on Instagram. And then I Mm -hmm. saw that you were the stylist and I was like, oh, I like what she's doing. And then Mm -hmm. I like followed you. And then I was like, hey, I need a stylist for one of our shoots because I don't want to think about it. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> and then you were just like, I'm down. And so yeah. um, there, we had an amazing time uh, at that photo shoot. And it was yes. so nice to be able to have a personal stylist that gets the fact that, you know, I'm curvy. There's things that, you know, I can't always wear and I can't wear it a certain way. And knowing that they understand those aspects to mm-hmm styling because I think Mm -hmm. it's really important I don't think that there's a lot of personal stylists that focus on the curvy body there are some but I don't see it as much as I would like to see it and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have these conversations with stylists that I know service curvy bodies because that one it gives them the opportunity to see that I can hire a personal stylist if I want to for an Mm -hmm. event for anything right like a trip something mm-hmm. like that. And so, and there's, there's different types of services that people don't realize that personal stylists or wardrobe stylists offer. Right. So right. this is a perfect opportunity for people to be like, what? I didn't think about that for a trip. I don't have to think about what I got to wear on a trip and they'll pack it for me. Yep. Sure. will. I wanted to kind of touch on the fact that I don't have like any background as far as going to school mm-hmm. for fashion or design. Um, I, I do want to say that because I feel like sometimes we get in our own way of pursuing something because of the fact that we did not get that degree or that certification there are gifts inside of us that don't require that. And it did take me a while to get confident in the fact that, no, you didn't have to go to school for this. You right. know what you're doing. <laughs> so it, so yeah. I just want to say that because I think it's important. Um, whatever your gift is, don't feel like you need to put money, my, put money towards a school um, you, mm-hmm. you can if you want to, yeah. like, no, but you don't have to. So, I just and, and to. I can, I agree that you know what you're doing. So I appreciate that. <laughs> As you've worked with curvy um, bodies or plus size bodies, what are some like words of encouragement that you've ever given them to like make them feel confident in something that you're putting together for them, or they're just not really focused on their personal style or their body. Like they're just not comfortable with, you know, who they are, how they show up, what are some encouragement that you can give them? So for example, someone that looking, they might be like, oh my God, I never felt that before. I would say only one year. Mm. And I would get into a habit of practicing speaking good things to yourself. Um, Live in a society where it's pretty much the men who really have formulated this 
standard of what beauty is, what fashion is, what style is. I'm 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 so glad that we are starting to get like out of that. But anybody can tell you, you know, oh my gosh, you look good. You can you can rock that. You can rock that, but it really has to be something that you believe for yourself. So I would absolutely say my first thing would be to really practice speaking positive affirmations about yourself and also get in the mirror Mm -hmm. get in the mirror and maybe put on that thing that you've been wanting to put on but you don't want to because you're not comfortable in it put it on get in the mirror and the first negative thing that comes to your mind I would say to say no (laughs) flip it and really kind of have like a, a an aspect of gratitude or a mindset of no I look good I and look I'm not, I'm speaking from personal experience listen I am I so I used to dance <laughs> and so that now that I'm no longer dancing you know things you know, I'm and as I'm maturing and you know aging, things are forming on my body, and my back doesn't look the way that I would like for it to look. Mm-hmm. And but I love wearing or love seeing like an yeah. open back on a dress, a top, a jumpsuit, and I actually purchased one, and it took me a while to wear it, but I finally was like Joy. <laughs> this is the body that you're in, you know. Yeah. Um, I am trying to, you know, you know, work out and see what changes, but now, but right now, you know, in this moment, yeah. this is what it is. And so, if yeah. you can't be confident in this, what's to say that you're going to be confident once you get the back that you want? And you know, so it's really. So long story short, I went to Jamaica with that backless <laughs> jumpsuit on, and felt like the most beautiful woman walking, you know? So it really does stem from yourself. Um, And also as far as like personal style, it really has to be something that's unique to you. Like you can't compare your personal style to, because it's personal. Um, You can't compare. I think it's important to have people who, look like you and have the same body type of you to get ideas right but comparing yourself to them is not good because you have to be you have to stay true to who you are um and that was one of the things that I would always end my blogs with and you got to stay true to you and you wear you you wear what you want to wear don't let nobody out here try to tell you what to wear because at the end of the day, people are going to talk. Um, and it's really coming from an insecure place within them, projecting it onto you. Um, so those would be the things that I would say. You really got to tell yourself that, look, I look good or practice that because, uh, you know, it's easier to talk negatively about yourself than it is positive. Right. Unfortunately. So I would really, that, that would be the one thing that I would hone in on. Um, also take your time, take your time figuring out what your personal style is. If you gotta, you know, write things out, um, don't try to rush it because I think when you try to rush it and try to, you know, oh, I'm going to buy this, I'm going to buy that, or I'm going to start wearing this. It kind of defeats the pur- purpose of knowing what your personal style is. Um, right. Oh, yeah, that, that would be my, my tidbit. <laughs> I, I, I always say, so we, we live in a society that's heavily influenced by influencers. And it's yeah. one of those things that people see an influencer wearing something and they're like, oh, I got to start wearing that. But then it's one of those things, like if you really know what your personal style is and you're really comfortable within yourself, you can also look at that as inspiration, as style Mm -hmm. inspiration. Like, oh, they wore it like this. 
but I might not feel as comfortable wearing it like that. So how mm -hmm. can I twist it to make it more my own? Mm 